Liverpool might be the real deal. Manchester United, the jokesters. Aston Villa looking like the real dark horse. And maybe City might not be too fatigued as expected. All these headlines on Mind of the Fans podcast. Let's go! Hello everyone, this is Mind of the Fans podcast, your go-to home for all things Premier League football. I'm David, he's Spy. Spy, how you doing? I'm very good, David. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, just, you know, chilling and vibing. You know, I'm always vibing. Nothing too serious. What's up? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a while since we've recorded, you know, you to you, double game weeks, festive times, you know? Yeah, I was, I was just about to say that, you know, you know, I hope you guys missed us. Because we surely miss you guys. We love. We missed um, recording for you guys and just so yeah. And as usual, first and foremost, thank you guys for your support. I've had a lot of people like asking me any episode coming out this week, any episode coming out this week, stuff like that. And it means the world that people actually listen to it and you know actually get what we are saying and stuff like that. So we really appreciate your support and you know you guys just keep vibing with us and we keep vibing. Yeah, so, yeah, keep up, you know, you guys should just keep up the good work and keep bringing the good stuff. So, yeah, Premier League match week 16, obviously from the introductions, those are some really entertaining headlines. I don't think Spy agreed with some of the things I said there. But what we have in store for today, obviously, we'll talk about match week 16 for a minute and then just touch on match week 14 and match week 15 because we did miss those things. And how those results kind of affected Matrix 16. Are we good to go from there, Spy? 100%. 100%. Lovely. So with that being said, where should we start from? Should we start from your predictions? Should we start from... The predictions should be, should be a good start. Your predictions, yeah. So let's see. Palace, Liverpool kicked off Matrix 16. Spy had Liverpool winning that. And I can gladly say Spy got that one correctly. Wolves, Forest, Spy had Wolves winning, so he missed that. Brighton, Burnley, he had Burnley winning, also missed that. Sheffield, Brentford, he had Brentford winning, missed that. United, Bournemouth, United, he had United winning and he missed it. Villa, Arsenal, he had a draw going that way and he missed it. I'm so sad that he missed that. I was, I would have actually taken a draw at, at, at towards the ending point of that game. But moving on, Luton City, he had City winning that. That's two out of two out of seven so far. Fulham West Ham, he had them two to draw. And Everton Chelsea, he had Everton winning. Actually, kudos to you, Spy. You yeah. had Everton winning. Come on. How would you that desperate right now? And Chelsea that playing around your points. Yeah, so um I had to give you that. Kudos to you. And then obviously to round it up, Matrix City rounded up with Tottenham, Newcastle at the Tottenham Stadium, and Spy predicted that two two. Wow. A lot, a lot, a lot. Did I actually predict ne- Spurs Nikos as a draw? Yeah. Wow, that's rare. I think I was so, caught in, in the mist. Yeah, so let's start from, obviously, pa- the early kickoff on Saturday. Palace Liverpool 2-1, which predicted. So that result has Liverpool top of the Premier League right now. Did you see that? And Which brings me to my question. Are they the real deal? Is this like the real Liverpool? Like, title contending Liverpool? Um... The way they played against Palace just shows you that Liverpool could be very fragile and they could also be very ruthless. In the sense that they could have conceded at least three goals to Palace in the first 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, Alisson's amazing saves, Trent clearing off the line, the um, penalty, the goal that was ruled, sorry, the penalty kick that was ruled out, and then the penalty kick that they scored. So enough, so far. It just means that the back line, something needs to be fixed. I know they have had like a huge improvement from like this season and last season, but there still needs to be fixing there. But the way they are looking offensively, as pretty much people say, offense is the best way of defense. Offensively, they are getting the work done, they're getting the goals. And the more you score, the more you have more chance of winning the game and getting all the three points. So that's true. That's true. And, and so the, I mean I mean, yeah. I'm I'm sorry for possibly. I just wanted to pop this question there. Is there was there an element of luck to that win? Because obviously, Andre, are you got sent off with like was it ten minutes to go or something like that? Was there an element of luck to that? Because some could say Palace with ten men could have actually saw that result, or they could have settled for a draw. I mean, I will not say luck 
because everything happens for a reason. I would yeah. say more of um, anticipation because at the end of the day, every little factor helps or changes how the game flows. So Andrew, I read card. Yes, of course it did it change how the game went, but we never would have known if a, an eleven man palace could have not considered more or could have considered less. At the end of the day, it's just a speculation. We would have never known. Yeah, that, I mean that's true. That's true. But I, I just thought that we should put this out there. Well, I mean, technically, you haven't even answered my question, to be honest, though. Are they actually the real deal? Like, Yes, if that backline can be closed up. Oh, so there's a condition to it? There is a condition to it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let, do, do you see where I have my doubts? If, if by the fact that there's a condition attached to it. But there's anyway. always a condition attached to everything being the real deal. There's always a condition of that. What was, what was City's condition for going through the row? City's condition is Pep. Pep is becoming um too too cheeky and confident. Okay, let's move along. <laughs> let's move along because that's just crazy. United Bournemouth, okay. Manchester United Bournemouth. And I'm I'm going to drop I'm going to drop this here because we're recording. I think this is we're recording Tuesday, so Champions League game has already been played and United have been knocked out of the Champions League. I'm so sorry. It pays my heart to be honest, but. To not diverge to the, from the main point, United Bournemouth, Spy had United winning that, and then Bournemouth came and said no, and they blew away United 3 0 at Old Trafford. I saw a stat that United has more losses at Old Trafford than more, sorry, they have as, more, as many losses at Old Trafford than win, as wins. Hearing that stat now, who is to blame for this? I don't even want to call it inconsistency because I don't even see there's no pattern. It's not that they are winning, they are losing type stuff. It's like they are just yeah. Who is to blame for this? Ten Hag, the Glazers, the players, the Glazers, the Glazers. Why? Sound like Gary Neville, by the way. First of all, I don't sound like Gary Neville. Second of all, no, 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 because 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 Gary Neville blames everything on Glazers, so it's kind of weird. It's not blaming everything. That's some times you can point fingers at Ten Hag, but once you watch the way our players play today, you could just say we were the better team. Against Bournemouth, we were by far the better team. But we no, you are not. No, you are not. I guess which Bournemouth? Bournemouth that gave you guys what? three. No, you are not. Are you mocking it? No, I'm not mocking you. You are clearly not the better team against Bournemouth. We were the better team. We no, created you are not. over times two more chances oh than God. Bournemouth. We dominated the position. Do you want me to carry on? Even Tech Hag came out and said you are not the better team. I am so... <sighs> Today against Bayern Munich, who was better? Who was better? You guys were a better team today against Bayern, but not against Bournemouth. Our performance against Bournemouth in the first half was better than our performance against Bayern in the first half. Watch the match, not the highlights. Okay, okay, Watch okay, the- okay. Wait, overall, overall, was your how's your performance against? But don't look at halves, halves. Let's talk about overall. Overall, we have to take Bayern because we knew where the stakes were. Okay. Okay, Spy. Keep, you can go on, go on. Oh, so, who is to blame? What I'm saying Glazers are to blame is the fact that Old Trafford, yes, we have the fans and everything, but it's not it's not different from any common thing, any Asian thing. I like to use that word Asian. Because if you go to Anfield, you have new infrastructure, you have Anthems fans, you have, you know, you never walk in on. You go to Etihad, infrastructure, five-star you have this, you have that, so on and so forth. Tottenham, look, Tottenham's home stadium now is a no-go area sometimes due to the fact that renovation, as far as it sounds like a petty thing, but if you actually think about it, if you renovate your house, you are happier living in your house. Yes or yes? That's true. So if you do not renovate a stadium, forget that it's your home, you will not feel as happy as renovating it. As Ronaldo said in the PS Morgan interview, there are some infrastructure that he saw there before leaving to Real Madrid. Not even some, most. And he still sees the same thing. Why? Are you trying to tell me that the jacuzzi since 2008 has not been changed? The training facilities has not been changed. Is that what you're trying to tell me? So what you're telling me right now is that the loss, the performances is based on the infrastructure. No, no. no. Okay. okay. I am telling you that Manchester United, as a football team, is going through a lot. Starting from the roots, the roots of the owners, then the infrastructure, then the players itself, and so on and so forth. 
and so on and so forth. Okay. And when I tell you, you sound like Gary Neville, you tell me I'm, I'm joking. But I have to give credit to Bournemouth though, because they came out on Blue United. Like, they came out and bored every aspect. Like, Dominic Solanke could have had a hat trick in that game. I mean, he only scored one, but like, I think he had one goal and one assist, something like that. But like, they came and they bored, and that was, that was, all, that was like their fourth win in five games or something like that. And I was like, okay, Bournemouth, keep going. I see you. Yeah, they are four, fourth, fourth win in five games. Like, they, I think they are now 10 points above relegation. So, kudos to Bournemouth. Um, United look like, I don't know. Do you know what? Do, do you know, to be honest, though, with United out of the Champions League, I do think this is a blessing in disguise. Do you know what I mean? No, I do not. Because at the end of the day, Champions League was never a distraction to us. The distraction is we need to play for the badge. That is the distraction. So something is distracted them from playing from the bar for for playing for the badge. I think they need to cut cut everyone's radios in that team. I think <laughs> I think the problem is uh that's a good one. Understand that players are too quick to go to social media. Not even that. I think the problem should be, or the problem is, cut everyone's wages, make everyone start from fifty thousand pounds, and then the better you play your wages increase. I think that will give the player something to play for because right now, Marcus Rashford can play the same football as an 82-year-old man and get paid over so whatever amount of money and he lives honestly now. So, in context, last week, United beat Chelsea 2-1, played one of the best footballs I've seen from United all season. And before that, they played Newcastle and they lost 1-0. And that was a very terrible performance. And then they come and play Bournemouth and that was just horrendous. So I guess we can blame the Glazers for the misfortune on the pitch. You can blame the Glazers for the misfortune on the pitch. You can blame the Glazers for every single thing. And the funny thing is that when United fans start chanting Glazers out, they do the same technique that I've been doing for the past six years to shut up United fans and it still works. I don't know, are we a bunch of... Because people have been doing one same technique, planting Glazers out. Glazers say, okay, we're going to spend the big money on a big star player and that will keep the fans quiet. And it has been going on for the past eight years and these fans are still buying it, honestly. And, or or they, win, they win one game and then everyone keeps quiet for a minute. And then you go on like a five-game winning, law, sorry, a five-game losing streak. And then honestly, Blazer... honestly. <laughs> Honestly, let's go back to flip. Let's hold on. Give me a minute. No, we can't do this by. Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we really can. Okay, one minute it is. Okay, what 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 year did we sign Lukaku? Sorry, Paul Pogba. Let's start from Paul Pogba's era. We signed. You know what? Let's start from Anthony Marshall. We signed Marshall Van House. Was it Van House? Yes, if I'm not mistaken. We signed Marshall. Cool. Glazers out. Stopped. We signed Marshall, we signed Memphis Depay, we signed Angel Di Maria. Glazers out, stopped. Okay, moving on. Glazers out, Glazers out, Paul Pogba. Glazers out, Glazers out, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Then Lukaku, the fans kept quiet. He went on again. Glazers out, Glazers out, Harry Maguire. Then what? We kept quiet. Then he went on. Glazers out, Glazers out, Anthony or Nana. The fans, quiet. You forgot, you forgot Ronaldo. Even though he was a problem, I'm just going to drop that hint there. No, not Ronaldo, my fault. Ronaldo, Cavani, Glazers out, stopped. Yeah? Now, no one is saying Glazers out. And every reasonable United fan that wants Ten Hag out should just drop your badge and go and support Chelsea. Because there is no other manager that has the ability to restructure this club than Ten Hag. And I'm so sorry, but... For that to start, Glazers have to go out. Because the f- type of football he played in Ajax, we have not even seen a bit of that in United. Why? Because he's also trying to listen to the board by putting the traditional United playing style in the team, which is not similar to Ten Hag's playing style. But he has to listen to his own authorities, even though he's the coach. He has people higher than him. Yep. And he's trying to do that uh, but it's clearly not working. We need to take away the traditional Manchester United, whatever, and start a new Manchester United because the traditional mindset, the traditional facilities are putting us in this mess. I can go on for days about this, but we're on, um, we have time limit, so I'll, I'll keep quiet about it. I vibe with that, though. I'll just give you that. I vibe with that. Let's transition to another 
one that is close to my heart really paid me this weekend. Just didn't necessarily, didn't necessarily spoil my weekend, but it kind of derailed my weekend a bit. Villa Arsenal, Aston Villa Arsenal, one nil to Aston Villa. John McGinn scoring in the seventh minute. Do you know what? what? Do you what know the, after? Oh, wait, wait, what? What a beautiful goal, by the way. After that goal, Villa looked nothing. Like they were actually nothing. I'm sorry to say, they were nothing. I'm just they were nothing. But at the end of the day, they came out with the results. Yeah, the that's that's that's. I'm, I'll give them that though. They came, they came out with the result. I'll give them that. My question for this is has nothing to do with Arsenal because I don't think there was a problem. You can tell me if there was a problem. Do you think there was a problem with Arsenal? Yes, yes, there was. So what was the problem with Arsenal? I think Zinchenko was too busy looking at Telemans. Is that all? Let's let me go, but let me ask the real question now. Can they go, okay? Not I don't say can they go all the way because it will look like I'm making them tied to contenders. How far can this their fairy tale, whatever it is, go on? That's not fairy tale. Um, it's going no, 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 no. Stop. No. no. <laughs> um, it's not really a fairy tale. It's just the fact that they protect their home ground. That's that's really just it. So they had probably the do I call it that role of fixtures in a week that any club can possibly have, and they walked through it. I won't say, but you know, I, they walked through it by getting the maximum points out of both fixtures. But it was at home, though. That's what I'm saying. They protect their home ground. That's literally what I just said. They had both matches at home, and they collected maximum points from both death row fixtures. Do you understand what it means to play Manchester City and then play Arsenal with just like two days rest? Yeah. That, 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 that alone to the human heart is a, is a bit something to take in not that Arsenal is a big team but like you know it's something difficult to do and they walk through that with maximum points I feel like this fairy tale is going to go on as far as they don't have any injury crisis because I think they're the only team this season with either one of the lowest injury crises or the lowest injury crisis no no they have um they have this guy out what's his name Emily Bundea and this. um and Mings I don't think that um Bundea Bundea you almost made me use your US pronunciation. I don't think that Buendia was really as effective while he was um, not injured under in Emery. And Tyro Mings, I believe he scored more own goals than he has helped the team. So I believe it's kind of a good thing that both of them are out. Okay, from, from what I'm getting is that, yeah, like you believe in this fairy tale shambles. I still don't say I don't I will not use the word fairy tale, but um they beat Arsenal, so <laughs> they made my day. Okay, until they come and beat United, so I mean, that's then not we'll, happening. Then we'll see we'll talk. That's not happening, but can you? Let me see, when did they play? Let me, oh my god, let me see when does Aston Villa play United? Oh December Boxing Day. Or oh, is yeah. that Old Trafford? Oh anyways. Anyways. Oh. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Luton City. Obviously, Luton scored first and then City decided to come back. Haaland was not available in that game due to apparently a stress in his toe, something like that. Um, but yeah, so should we expect a type of inconsistency from City? That's my big question from this game. Yeah. I, I would say yes, and I would also say no. Like I would say that. yes, due to the fact that um, they, are, they also have some injury crisis. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the Bruyne... Our main, yeah, the main threat is injured. Haaland is not their main threat, unfortunately. If you're a real football fan, you know that their main threat is the Bruyne. So, their main threat is injured, and their most comfortable Pep-style playing player is just recently just got back to fitness, which is the general John Stones. He just um, got back to fitness, so... I think a couple of weeks and City will be back to City. But right now, I just feel like Pep is being that overconfident tactician that he always tries to be. Do you know what? He came out in a press conference and gave out like, in three different press conferences, he said three different things. That is Did you I'm, see that? And that is what I'm trying to say he's being so overconfident. In one press conference, he said he believes that they are still going to win the title, no matter yeah. how they're playing right now, that they are going to win it. That is... That is one shocking statement. And then, and then the next one, he comes out and he says, we are struggling. And then the next one, he says, we are struggling. And the, the so on and so forth. Like, like, Just, like pick your side, bro. Like, like, can you? This is exactly what I'm saying. He's being that overconfident, you know, 
But I feel that is going to affect C. And I, if they don't go back to normal C E football that we know, because right now every team knows what C E does. And I believe that the new C E of the Premier League right now is Tottenham. You may not accept it, but it is it is Tottenham because at the end of the day, Tottenham's coach once said in the press conference, they asked him, What tactics do you do? And his words were, and I quote, Well, I just copy Pep. Whatever Pep does, I do. Quote, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I don't believe I'm wrong. So I think he's watched and masterminded Pep's tactics. And now he's isn't in a Tottenham team that has chased away some beautiful managers and he's using it well. And yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Luton have just been unlucky. Oh my God. Going up against City, almost securing a point at Arsenal, getting a point at Luton. Like, they have just been so unlucky. I feel so bad because they're actually playing amazing football. Like, but I feel so bad for them, to be honest. Yeah, I feel that they should have carried a point from Arsenal. That's what I feel. Um, yeah. I mean, all this, all this banter with Arsenal, I, it's just, it just shows how much you love it. So you love no, it no, 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 no. It just shows that due to United's struggling, eye-watering season, Arsenal has just won three more games than Manchester United. Um, that, that, is, that is... Okay, moving on. Moving okay. on. Sorry. Also. Moving on, Everton Chelsea. 2 0. I mean, I don't even have anything to say. I, all I have to say is kudos to Everton. Like, they just came out and bought Chelsea. I'm not even going to talk about Chelsea because I don't even have anything to say concerning Chelsea. Just, oh, I have something to say. Even though, for, even though for the 10 point deduction, Everton are meant to be four points above Chelsea. Chelsea fans, sorry, but um, you've lost Rich James. Yeah, about two months or so, hamstring. Chelsea fans? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah but Everton came out and just balled like this 10 point deduction is not even phasing them a bit so kudos to Everton I don't even consider Chelsea is a waste of my time talking about it they're just so inconsistent it's annoying at this point Everton yeah. should actually be in 10th place right now yeah if not for the 10 point deduction they should be four points above Chelsea. And Chelsea's what, 12th, right? If right, like, remember it, correctly. It, it, look at the stats. Everton has won seven, drawn two, lost seven. And the closest team... Oh, tenth. That, yeah, they actually meant to be 10th. One the point behind West Ham. Is West Ham. West Ham has won seven, same amount of them, drawn three, and lost six. So unlucky. Anyways, Spurs Newcastle. Spurs Newcastle. Spurs came back from their slump and beat Newcastle it's really depleted Newcastle I will just put that there because I don't think people know how depleted Newcastle is but like a really depleted Newcastle came back and beat them 4-1 at the Tottenham Stadium and my question for this is actually I have two questions are Newcastle showing their weaknesses and are Spurs actually back first off Newcastle away from home they are probably the most weird team to play against. But once they're in St. James's Park, they are confident and so on and so forth. In terms of sports, 4-1 is, yeah, is a big gap. But I don't think we can use one game to measure if they're back. I think we have to see another week out to see how the boys perform. Yeah, and I mean, and changed some tactics. He moved Son back to the left. Put Richardson up front. Do you know those guys play without ta- no tactics? Like, I was watching the game. I this, I, like, first, obviously, they play with tactics. Like, you know, the fallbacks going. You know, usually, Pep, according to Pep and Ateta, they push, they push their fallbacks into the middle. But Ange pushes his fallbacks wide. Like, well, not wide. So, well, wide, technically. Meaning, when they're attacking the ball, they have five men up front. Like five, like literally one, two, three, four, five. Because that, if you see the um, Udogi's goal, Bro was literally in the center forward position. No, this, this, this is, and that's not how you. Um, when you see a team like Tottenham, a team like Manchester United, the last thing to come and do is to try and impose some street tactics like Pep and Ateta does. Yeah, because that will just go down the drain. Mourinho tried to do it. Conte tried to do it, that will go down the drain. I'm not saying you're not meant to have tactics. Yes, you're meant to have tactics, but at the end of the day, the players should just play. So, yes, have numbers forward and everything, but 
it's just like let me use my team for example now we have a certain i'll not call it tactics but i'll call it everyone knows their role and this season my team has scored about um shall i say 20 something goals in like eight nine games and we don't the tactic is not to like just you know at the end of the day you still play your ball play your football but you have your setting role and you know what to do and i think that that is what applies in tottenham so the fullbacks definitely when you're attacking you know your role is to go forward to join the attack center backs I don't know what they're doing. That's him. I don't know. Bro, Romero, Romero's lucky to like not get sent off with that game. 100%. He was so lucky. He just cut. Yeah. Anyways, we won't, we won't read too deep into it. Let's touch on some few results before I round up from this episode. Fulham. I saw, I saw a stat. Fulham, in their first 10 games or so, they only scored 10 goals. But in their last three games, they had scored 16 goals. Back to back 5 0 wins. Oh but my god. They they literally annihilated an inform West Ham 5 0. Annihilated them. Like West Ham looked like baby poop. Sorry. I'm sorry, but they look like baby poop. West Ham so it was scary. West Ham Have you ever seen baby poop to compare West Ham to that? Well yeah, obviously. Let's not go into details now. Who hasn't seen baby poop spy? Haven't you haven't you changed oh a, a baby's god. diaper? Oh my god. Viewer description is advised. <laughs> Just say like, bruh, haven't you changed a baby's diaper to know that? <laughs> but anyways, anyways, yeah, they looked absolutely hammered. Fulham came and decided to play ball. And I was like, okay. Hopefully this is the Fulham we see and love, you know. You feel me? No, there. I don't want to see. I love this for them. Human is good up to you, but um, you should end there. Why? Do you guys? You, you don't play Fulham next, do you? No, you don't play Fulham. No, they will play Europe next. Easy, oh, yeah. easy three points. You know what? I'll actually want to. Like, I'm not going to deep into that. We'll talk about that on Friday. Um, the um, Sheffield Brentford, Sheffield Chris Wilder second game back, and he absolutely. Well, I don't say he destroyed, but. Beat Brentford at home one 0 I didn't really watch that game to be honest. Brighton Burnley another game. I think if I remember correctly, Burnley scored first and Brighton then equalized. Brighton haven't had that sparkle that they had like last season. And then Wolves obviously Wolves Forest. I mean there was this thing going around that if Forest had lost this game, um, Steve Cooper would have been sacked for. I don't know how true that would have been, to be honest. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know why they would sack him. Like, this is the same thing pretty much that happened last season. I don't know why they would sack him, to be honest. But they ended up, you know, getting a point from there. And apparently, he has, he has been given more time. So, those are your results from Matrix 16. Anything to add from there? Um, no. No, lovely. Well, I think this is a wrap. For this episode we'll be back on friday actually we'll be back on friday not our usual time because there's an early game week on friday there's an yeah there's an early sorry not early game week there's an early game on friday forest spurs so we'll be back on instagram a little bit earlier spy okay okay i just, I just wanted to confirm with you i don't like how you put me in the spot like that oh, I, i'm so sorry i should have done that i'm so sorry yeah, you shouldn't be sorry. You should. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for sticking with us. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, we appreciate all your love and your support. We absolutely missed you guys and I hope you did miss us also. Keep vibing with us. I will keep, you know, giving you guys the good stuff. I hope you guys have an amazing week. We'll see you guys on Friday, Instagram Live. We're out. <laughs>